All right, so let's see how uh, we can go about solving this problem with the work energy theorem. So first, um, the work energy theorem says that the total work done on our system is equal to the change in energy of the system. And here by system, we mean the block. That is our system. Um, and we can figure out which forces are doing work on the block. So there is the force that we're pushing with here. Turns out there's also a normal force and a weight force acting on the block, but those are neither of those are gonna do work because any displacement of the block is horizontal and those forces are vertical. So if you look at the dot product and the definition of work, you'll see that that dot product will go to zero. So whenever your motion and your force are perpendicular to each other, that force does no work. Um, so the only force that could be doing work is the force of uh, this unknown force on the block of A on B. Um, in terms of what types of energy the block has, it only has energy associated with um, its center of mass motion. We're ignoring friction, which means we're ignoring um, any changes in thermal energy. This block could rotate, but it's not rotating, so it doesn't have a change in rotational kinetic energy. And we, we haven't yet talked about um, potential energy or E other yet. So those aren't things we need to worry about right now and aren't, aren't changing in this choice of system. Um, so we're gonna look at the change in translational kinetic energy of the block. So that's gonna be one half the mass of the block times V final minus one half the mass of the block times V initial squared. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot to say the squared on um, my first term here. And since the final speed is less than the initial speed, the translational kinetic or the change in translational kinetic energy is less than zero. This block is losing energy. So if this block is losing energy, then it means there must have been negative work done by the block, done on the block. The only thing that could have done this negative work was uh, this force AB that was applied to it. So um, whatever this system A is took some of the energy that the block had um, for its own purposes, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but the work done on, um, on this block from this initial state to this final state is in fact less than zero. So our only two options here are B and E, the positive and zeros went away. And now we have to decide if this force could be conservative or not. And since we went along a closed path here, we went from X naught away and back to X naught, we know that if this was a conservative force, then the work done would have had to come out to be exactly zero. That's one of the uh, working definitions of a conservative force for us. Since it didn't come out to be zero, we know that this is actually a non-conservative force. So the correct answer here must be E. And we'll talk more about what the real power of um, conservative forces is uh, here in a little bit when we revisit that uh, question we started off the discussion with. Um, okay, so before we revisit that question, let's do a quick work example. And so um, let's say we have a block that's sliding a certain distance D down an inclined plane, and we wanna figure out how fast it's moving at, as it moves the distance D. So it starts from rest, how fast is it moving um, when it's right here? Uh, and so we're gonna use the work uh, energy theorem that the total work is equal to the change in energy of the system in order to, to solve for this. And we're gonna assume that friction is negligible along the incline. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the work done by gravity on the block. So uh, we're gonna make our system equal to the block. We're gonna draw a coordinate system. I've, I've chosen positive X to be along the incline and positive Y to point uh, perpendicular to the incline. Again, my answer won't depend on which coordinate system I picked. The weight force acts at the center of mass of the block and points straight down. And then the normal force points from the point of contact through the center of mass up like this. Um, so we're gonna figure out how much work is gravity doing as this block moves down the incline. So I'm gonna use the definition of work to calculate this, that work is the, uh, in this line integral from the initial force displacement to the final force displacement. And uh, the weight vector, I'm gonna go ahead and write that in terms of my XY coordinate system here. So it has an X component of mg sine theta pulling me down the ramp. 
and a Y component of negative mg cosine theta pulling me into the ramp. Our DS vector and Cartesian coordinates is always going to be DX i hat plus DY j hat. And when we take the dot product of our weight force with our DS vector, we get that the i hat components multiply each other and the j hat components multiply each other. So our line integral actually sets, separates out into these two different integrals, one over x, which in the x direction I'm going from zero to d, and one over, y, one over the y coordinate, which in the y direction I'm going from zero to zero. And again, what I mean is the, the point where the force is applied, how far is that point moving? And so we can see that this portion of the integral is gonna come out to be equal to zero, uh, and we're just gonna be left with the x, the integral over x, which is gonna give us mg sine theta, which is a constant, times d, the uh, distance that the block slid. Okay, so we have one piece of our work energy theorem. We have the work done by gravity, but let's see about the work done by the other force uh, that's acting on our system. Because remember, both of these forces are external. Both could potentially do work on the system. So what is the work by the normal force? Well, the displacement is in the x direction, but the normal force is in the y direction. So if I look at my ds vector, which is again dx i hat plus dy j hat, and I look at my normal force vector, which is only in the j hat direction, I can conclude that when I set up this integral, which is going to have a, a normal force times dy, and I integrate that from zero to zero, I'm going to get zero. What that means is that the ramp isn't transferring any energy to the block via the normal force. There's no displacement in that direction, the block is moving uh, parallel to the ramp and the normal force points perpendicular to the ramp. So there can't be any work done or any transfer of energy. So um, the fact that the work done by the normal force goes to zero in situations like this is, is really going to be very useful to us. So finally, I want to put all of this together to figure out what the final speed of the block is. So my total work is the work done by the x component of the weight force plus the work done by the x component of the normal force since the block's only moving in the x direction. Um, one of these is zero. The other one I calculated to be mg sine theta times the distance here d. That is going to be equal to my change in energy of the system. And the only type of energy that's changing in the system is translational kinetic energy. So I can uh, write down what the change in translational kinetic energy is in terms of the mass of the block and the final and initial speeds of the block. The initial speed of the block is zero, so this equation simplifies to mg sine theta d is equal to one half m v final squared. And now we can solve this for the final speed of the block. Notice that the masses here are going to cancel. And if I rearrange and take the square root, I get that the final speed of the block is the square root of 2g and then this quantity sine theta d. I want you to go ahead and take a minute and think about what d times sine of this angle would give us. And it would actually be the vertical, the distance that this block moved. Um, so keep that in mind, especially for the 5-1 studio, as that's going to be really important. Okay, so we know how to calculate work, we know how to calculate changes in translational kinetic energy, but let's again talk about why we're doing this. Why are we introducing this new method um, when we had Newton's second law and that seemed to work pretty okay for most situations. So let's go back to the situation that we were having a hard time with earlier where the normal force kept changing direction and Newton's second law for translation was gonna be really difficult to figure out the final speed. Gravity would have been easy because it kept pointing down. We could have chosen a straight coordinate system. It would have been fine, but the normal force would have been very hard. Um, so let's see what happens if we use the work energy theorem. So if we make our system to be the block, we know that the total work done on the block is the change in energy of the system. We know that the work done by the normal force is actually zero for the same reason it was zero in the last example. Even though the normal force is changing direction, it's always perpendicular to my displacement vector. So it's always going to be zero. 
So the work done on this block is only going to be due to the weight force. And again, I can use the definition of what work is to calculate this. I need to know where my displacement vector is, is pointing at all times. And you might think that that will be kind of hard because the displacement vector is changing direction. But because gravity is a conservative force, we actually don't have to pick the path that the object took along the ramp. We can pick any path that we want as long as it starts and ends at the same two points. So I could pick a straight line path going between these two points, and that would effectively be the exact same example we just worked out on the last slide. Or I could pick a path that goes perfectly horizontal and then perfectly vertical. And along the perfectly horizontal region, where I'm only moving in the x direction, any force that points vertical, like gravity, is going to do no work because the force and the displacement are uh, perpendicular to each other. But along the vertical uh, direction, gravity will be doing work. And so I can calculate the work done to gravity, and, and that will be a fairly straightforward calculation. Um, if I pick positive y to point down, uh, then what I effectively get is uh, the weight force magnitude times dy integrated from 0 to h, and that gives me mgh. And if you compare that to what we got on the last example, where h is d sine theta, you'll see that we get the same answer. We can then set that equal to the change in translational kinetic energy of the block, recognize that the initial speed of the block is zero, and find that the final speed of the block is really the square root of two times g times h. No matter what path the particle actually took or the block actually took, we would get this exact same answer. So we could do this for even for any crazy shape ramp, even one that went up and then came back down. At the end of the day, all that matters is what the vertical, um, the change in vertical height was in terms of figuring out the, the final speed of the block. Okay, so I hope this helped get you all started on topic 5-1, and we'll have some studio activities for you to work through that will help further your understanding of the topic.